My name is Don Ranta. I'm the president and CEO of Rare Element Resources. Uh, Rare Element owns a property in the state of Wyoming uh, called the Bear Lodge property. It's a rare earth property. There are several key characteristics I'd like to mention about the property. Uh, one of those, it's the second highest grade of any deposit here in North America. Uh, secondly, it has a great distribution of different rare earth elements, both the heavies and the lights. Uh, it also has some great metallurgical characteristics uh, that will allow us a very simple processing to get a very good recovery. And finally, the infrastructure in the state of Wyoming is outstanding for this particular project, and I'll describe each of those. Some of the company highlights. Um, the U.S. Geological Survey has indicated that there's one of the largest deposits of disseminated, or by the disseminated we're talking relatively low-grade rare earth elements. But we're focused on the high-grade zones within that, that uh, very large deposit. We have a 43101 inferred resource of 17.5 million tons of about 3.5%, and that is the second highest grade of any uh, substantial size deposit in North America. And we're in the process of uh, updating that, and it should be done fairly quickly. Uh, the type of system it is is a carbonatite system. The largest rare earth deposits uh, in the world are these carbonatite type systems. We've completed a scoping study and we own 100% of the project. A uh, scoping study was done just last fall. The other interesting thing is uh, there's a gold system surrounding the rare earths. Uh, the gold system uh, basically forms almost like a halo. It's a halo of deposits and we have an uh, NI43101 resource, inferred resource on that also of uh, about 950,000 ounces. We're well cashed up with about $72 million in the bank and uh, experience management with about 6% ownership uh, by insiders. This is the scoping study highlights. Uh, this is the, the project that was completed last November. It's a 43101 type document, a technical report. Uh, what you'll notice on this is the pricing basis. That's the yellow highlighted area in the top. Uh, the pricing basis was going for rare earth carbonate concentrates, uh, which is the first saleable product for rare earth products. Uh, the pricing basis we used was a three-year trailing average, as a historical average over the last three years. And remember, this was done in November, so that goes through August about 2010. Uh, the price that we chose was about $5.51 um, per kilogram. Uh, and that was that three-year trailing average. Our initial capital is relatively low compared to many others. It's about uh, 87 million. We think that uh, may actually go up just a little bit with our next study, maybe as much as 100 million, but still staying in that same relative level. We'd be producing about 10,300 metric tons of rare earth oxide each year, and 10,300 metric tons would be roughly 5% of the world's production in the year that we'd go into production, which would be 2015. The other thing I want to point out on this scoping study highlights is the internal rate of return. Uh, that came out at 40% based on the assumptions that you see here and uh, a very robust rate of return uh, considering that we used only historical prices. And the pricing uh, has gone up considerably in the last nine months or year uh, since the study was done. The after-tax after net present value was at a 10% discount rate as of 213 million. Uh, we've done a little bit of work on uh, what, would be, what would happen if we updated this, uh, and we haven't done that in a scoping study, but if the current price would be $10.83 per kilogram, uh, if we did a, a little over a 3.25 year average uh, as of April 2011, and uh, we get an internal rate of return over 100% and a net present value at 10% discount of something like 775 million. So it's potentially a very, very robust project, uh, especially at uh, slightly elevated prices from the historical averages. Infrastructure I mentioned is outstanding. 
The Bear Lodge project is shown on this slide in the upper left side, uh, the project where the star is located there. Interstate 90 is only 12 miles away from our project. We have paved roads coming within two miles of the project. Uh, we have power lines coming within a mile of the project, and our power costs are going to be three cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, three cents a kilowatt hour is one of the lowest power costs in the United States and one of the lowest in North America. There may be just a few places in Canada uh, where that are actually a little bit lower, but in the United States, I don't know of any power costs that are going to be lower than three cents a kilowatt hour. The reason the power costs are so low is we're right next to the Powder River Basin, which is one of the world's largest coal mining regions. There's multiple power plants there and multiple coal mines. We're also only 40 miles or so from the nearest railroad, and we would expect to bring in uh, reagents, supplies uh, on that rail line. And uh, with any rare earth project, there's either going to be a large quantity of, of concentrate that's moved uh, some distance or a large quantity of chemicals that are used as reagents. So very favorable community acceptance. Um, we are, have a government relations program that's been very favorable, and so local, state, and federal uh, community acceptance has been very, very good, and uh, uh, people in Washington, D.C. Are, are getting to be well aware that there's a, a potentially a major resource here in this state of Wyoming that uh, could be developing into a, a major rare earths mine. Uh, this is a geologic map, and I'm not going to talk much about geology other than to say that that pink area that's kind of centrally located there uh, actually was a volcano about 40 million years ago. And right in the heart, right in the center of that volcano, kind of in the roots, because this has been eroding for the last 40 million years, is the Bull Hill Rare Earth Element Deposit. And that's in that central location. Surrounding it are a series of gold targets, the Carbon, Taylor, Smith, Richardson, and other targets. Some of these are actually deposits, and they're part of that 950,000 ounces of gold. Uh, but at this point, we see a pretty clear separation of the bulk of the gold from, from the rare earth deposits. Again, the U.S. Geological Survey indicated that this is one of the largest occurrences of disseminated or low-grade rare earth deposits. And by low-grade, we're talking about 1% or so material. Of course, in, with many other uh, projects around North America, 1% would be considered very high grade. Uh, so that's an interesting uh, sidelight on this. The U.S. Bureau of Mines actually did some drilling on this project uh, in the 1950s, drilled 10 holes and came up with an estimate of 84 million tons. That's a historical estimate of, uh, of about 1.5% in one part of the system and it's in the Whitetail Ridge area where we've just barely started drilling, so it's not part of our resource uh, at all at this point. We, we do see this inferred mineral resource that I mentioned before, 17.5 million tons of about 3.5%, and we have higher grade within that. What we're really focused on is the upper part of the system. It's from the surface down to about 500 feet, and it's the oxidized zone in the upper part of the system that's uh, where most of our focus is right now. We've had very favorable metallurgical results on that material, and it's also a very substantial tonnage. It's about 8 million tons of about 3.6% uh, REO, rare earth oxides. Uh, and that, again, includes some higher grade material. Uh, so this is the material that would be open pit mineable. Uh, it's easily amenable to our, our um, processing system that we've devised and I'll be describing that in a little bit. We are working on a preliminary feasibility study that we hope to have done roughly about the end of the year. It might go a little bit into 2012, but it's about that time period. This is a photograph of our rare earth drilling in the Bull Hill area. Uh, you'll notice that there's uh, rolling hills, you see lots of good pasture land, but you don't see many rocks, and that's one of the key things about the Bear Lodge Mountains, and especially this area around Bull Hill. We have extensive soil cover. It's not very thick. It's only about one to three meters thick. Uh, but it is extensive, and it basically hides the geology, and that makes exploration very challenging. Uh, Molly Corp actually had this property about uh, 30 years ago, uh, but when they did their drilling, they didn't hit very much, if, if any, of the high grade. Uh, they didn't know where to go uh, to find more. 
uh, Hecla Mining Company came in about 25 years ago and they were led in part uh, by our Vice President of Exploration, Jim Clark. And uh, Jim and his team actually made the initial discovery of the high-grade mineralization in their 1986-87-88 uh, drilling program. And, uh, and Hecla was ramping up their program because uh, the, I think they realized that they had something very significant. Uh, but then they cut back on their program right after about 1990. And I think that was because the Chinese had ramped up their production. Um, rare earth prices began falling during that same time period. So Hecla basically abandoned its rare earth program. Uh, there's, you can see that there's timber uh, in this photograph. So there's active logging actually in there in the, the Bear Lodge Mountains. Uh, and cattle grazing, so there's other industrial activity. Mining fits into that, that type of uh, land use very nicely. We don't expect permitting to be a major difficulty. This is a, a map, a plan map, uh, showing the drilling that's been done in the past on the Bull Hill area. Uh, the Bull Hill Southwest Resource is where you see the, the biggest cluster of drill holes, and uh, those are histograms of grade, and some of the higher grades are 8 to 10 percent or more. You can see six different target areas here. All of those have some uh, significance. Uh, we've only drilled uh, thoroughly one of the systems. That's the Bull Hill Southwest Resource. Uh, you can see we're kind of in the upper left center, Whitetail Ridge, REE. -E. That's where the U.S. Bureau of Mines drilled uh, their 10 holes and estimated 84 million tons of 1.5 percent. Uh, Rare Element has only drilled two holes there so far, and uh, we're expecting to see maybe a small resource develop there uh, when we complete our current resource estimation. This is a cross-section through the Bill Hill area, and uh, most of the high grade is in dikes. They're like big fat veins that are shown in kind of the greenish uh, uh, bodies that go up towards the surface. But the interesting that there's lots of low grade, a lot of this 1% material surrounding it. And, uh, and that's one of the things that we're working on is the metallurgical testing of the low grade too to see if we can get uh, uh, some of the rare earths out of that material because uh, it has some very interesting characteristics, again, that may allow some simple processing. This is uh, an example of some of the drill holes that we got back from our 2010 drilling program. Uh, note the first one, RES 09-21, uh, that has approximately 250 feet of, of about 6% average grade. 6% is very high grade uh, for most rare earth deposits and, uh, and certainly it's a higher than our average grade in this one. But you'll notice that many of these other holes have good thicknesses, you know, 40, 60, 80 feet, 100 feet or more of 6%, 10%, 4.5%, 8% and so on. The step-off holes noted here on that right-hand column are holes that were beyond the limits of our, of our previous resource estimate, and we feel that those are the holes that we'll add to our resources uh, with, our, with this next uh, resource estimate that we're in the process of completing. This is uh, another example of some of our 2010 drill holes. Again, you see the same kind of results. We drilled 62 holes. Uh, last year in 2010. We're planning a similar type program this year, uh, 50 to 100 drill holes, uh, it, both for, for infill drilling and step-off drilling. Uh, again, you can see some of the step-off holes, and you can see some of the really good grades and the good thicknesses. 183 feet of 3.5%, 76 feet of over 10%, 293 feet of 3.5%. Uh, not uncommon in this system, so we're going to see some years uh, when we're in production of very high grade uh, that'll be produced. And then the last uh, hole shown on this, uh, the hole number 62, 179 feet at 8.78. So there's, again, some high grade within the system. This is uh, an example of some of the core that we would collect. Uh, the low grade material would be on the left. And on those fracture surfaces where you see the rock is broken, uh, there would be some rare earth minerals. And the rare earth minerals many times just falls off those fractures after we've drilled them. Uh, on the right, uh, the darker material, uh, some of it looks like core way on the far right, but a lot of it looks uh, like it doesn't form much of a core at all, and that's because it's such so soft and friable, it just kind of falls apart, 
and even that core material that's dark on the right, if you picked it up with your hand, you could probably break it. Um, the rare earth minerals are the, are the light brown minerals here. Uh, in this particular core tray, uh, the high grade zone is, is averaging close to around 8%. So uh, this is a unique type material. The binding minerals in the, uh, the high grade zones in what was originally carbonatite have been leached out, been removed, and because of that, the rock falls apart. And because of those characteristics, uh, we have a very simple processing system. This shows some of our metallurgical test results, and the charts show kind of a progression in uh, how we did some of our early studies. But the simplified flow sheet in red on the right is the key thing we're looking at. Uh, the flow sheet is that, uh, in fact, the, the first part of this is basically the same thing as, as a, a gravel or sand washing operation and the only reagent we're going to use is water. So basically you'd screen it first and get, get rid of some of the low-grade blocks that might be in this material. Much of it doesn't need to be crushed, but a little bit might be. So that's why you put crushing with a question mark. Then it would have two stages of scrubbing, and the scrubbing is just mixing uh, the ore-grade material with water. It'd be 60% water, 40% solids. You'd agitate it just for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, and two different times. Uh, and then you screen it or do some kind of size separation. And it's the finest materials that have the rare earths. Now we call that the mineral preconcentrate and we get 90% recovery at that stage. Then the material, that mineral preconcentrate would be probably trucked off of the mountain uh, and over to our, the, one of the railheads and then we would take that material and put it in the vat with hydrochloric acid, agitate it again, and uh, eventually precipitate a rare earth carbonate concentrate, which I indicated before is going to be our first saleable product. So we get another 90% recovery at that stage. So it, it's effectively 90% of 90% or roughly 80% overall recovery is what we'd be anticipating for the concentrate. The other really interesting and unique thing about the Bear Lodge project is the distribution of different rare earth elements. There's a controversy between heavy rare earths versus light rare earths, but I think the, the more logical way to approach that is to talk about what are the valuable rare earths, because there's some of the light rare earths that are more valuable than many of the heavy rare earths. Uh, and those two are neodymium and are more valuable than, than some of the other heavy rare earths. In addition, terbium and dysprosium are two of the more valuable of the heavy rare earths. And the Bear Lodge project has a considerable amount of, of all of those. Uh, neodymium, praseodymium, terbium, and dysprosium would all be used in rare earth magnets, which are the largest market. It's growing the fastest. It's growing at about 10 to 15% per year. And uh, we expect that the prices on these four elements will stay up at a pretty high level uh, pretty consistently for a long period of time because there's going to be a shortage for most of these elements. Europium is another one. It's used in compact fluorescent lights. It's used in TV screens and other things like that as a phosphor. And uh, so europium is another one that we think is a large market rare earth uh, and one that we have in, in relative abundance in the Bear Lodge project. So, uh, we think that these five, we're calling the big five, neodymium, praseodymium, europium, terbium, dysprosium, are some of the key elements. It's 20% of our total weight percent distribution, but it represents probably more than 60% of the potential value, and, and it could end up being more than that. This goes back to the exploration targets. Uh, again, there are six targets uh, shown here. Um, but one of the key things that we're finding with our exploration work this past year is that some of these targets may be continuous. Four of the targets may line up and be all on the same structural system and have the same kind of mineralization and it may be continuous. So we have drilled out about 1,500 feet in the Bull Hill Southwest resource area, uh, but this total trend may be as much as 5,000 feet long. So we feel that doubling our resource is, is a pretty good possibility and that's what we're going to be working on this, this coming summer. Uh, that's this summer, 2011.
and we see that that zone may continue further to the southeast as well as through the Whitetail Ridge target and all the way up to the carbon rare earth target. So that's going to be one of our major efforts in exploration this, uh, this, this summer. Now the milestones that we've completed are shown here. Um, quite a bit of drilling in 2004 to 2009, 32 core holes completed by the company, plus a number of core holes completed previously by Mollycorp and uh, Hecla Mining. Uh, and we did get favorable metallurgical results on those. And we updated the resource about a year ago and we're in the final stages of updating the resource now for, for 2011. Uh, we drilled 60 holes last year and that, those holes are all, uh, I showed some examples of those holes and those are being the ones that are using for the updating. Uh, plus we've drilled another 40 large diameter holes for a bulk sample. Those will be used for metallurgical testing and uh, we're going to go to a pilot plant study uh, later this summer, uh, probably starting in June, or July or August. Uh, we completed the scoping study, we, we did the financing, raised 57 million in the fall, uh, November, December. So upcoming, what we're working on now is more metallurgical testing. Uh, we'll be optimizing that for quite a, quite a long time. Uh, we're doing up, updating, upgrading of the resource estimate. We expect to come up with a, a significant amount of indicated resources with this uh, with this program, uh, and then the pilot plant test. The pilot plant test will produce some rare earth carbonate concentrate, our first saleable product, and we will use that material then for marketing. We'll bring it to different companies who will have refineries in place outside of China by 2015. We'll provide that material to them, maybe 50 kilograms each or something like that, uh, so that they can test it and see whether or not there's, uh, we can get an offtake agreement at that stage uh, just by selling to some of our concentrate. So that's going to be our marketing study and then uh, like I indicated before we'll, we're expecting to finish the preliminary feasibility study rough about, roughly about the end of the year plus or may, maybe minus a month. Um, I'm not going to say anything about the gold other than uh, we did come up with a, a NI43101 compliant inferred resource estimate of about 950,000 ounces. It's low grade. We're planning another drilling program this year. It's going to be looking for higher grade pods uh, within that area and also outside of, of the existing resource. Uh, but that's the main thing. The next couple slides are um, just showing some of the thicknesses and grades of some of these holes. And you can see some of the holes have some better than one gram material and that's what we're going to be focusing on with our current uh, drilling program this coming summer. More of the same are some of our 2010 results. Again, you can see some, some zones of better than a gram per ton and those are uh, some of the areas we want to focus. Management team, myself, I've been in the business for 40 years. I'm a geologist, uh, was a VP of exploration for Echo Bay Mines, uh, uh, ran Phelps Dodge North American Exploration Program, uh, worked for the Amex and Kennecott. I've had a lot of experience with evaluating uh, mineral deposits as well as exploring for them. And uh, uh, I've worked closely with a guy named Jim Clark, who's our VP of Exploration. Uh, Jim's the expert on um, rare earth deposit geology and uh, the combination of his experience with rare earth deposits plus my experience with how to evaluate these, these types of deposits pr properly uh, has worked out really well for the company. Jay Pickerts uh, has been consulting for us for a better part of a year, uh, but he just joined us a couple of months ago as our chief operating officer. He's a metallurgist and metallurgical engineer, uh, has worked extensively for multiple companies, uh, not so much in the rare earth business because there aren't very many of those around, uh, but certainly in gold, copper, and other uh, base metal, precious metal type projects. Mark Brown is our CFO and director. Uh, he's one of the founders of Rare Element Resources and he's one of the pr people who kept the company operational when it was difficult to raise money. He, his persistence in providing funding for the company uh, put us in the position that we are today. And plus, he and I went out and did a lot of the marketing for the $65 million that we raised last year. George Byers is our VP of Government and Community Relations. Uh, George, again, has a lot of experience with many different mining companies. Uh, doing the government relations activity and uh, very well connected in the western U.S. and in Washington, D.C. Directors, um, Norm Anderson, 
Uh, you see the second director is our new chairman of the company. Uh, Norm Burmeister, listed number one, is, one of the, is the founder of the company. It was his vision uh, back in 1999-2000 uh, that led to the company acquiring the Bear Lodge project. Uh, he had the, the thought and the idea that rare earths were going to be valuable someday and that he knew of a good project in the state of Wyoming where he lived and acquired it uh, and was the president uh, CEO of the company in the early years. Then we have other uh, key advisors and other directors who add a lot of value to the company. Our technical team, uh, there's a few PQ people I want to emphasize. One of them is Dr. Tony Mariano, Anthony Mariano. Uh, he is probably the world's leading expert in the mineralogy and geology of rare earth deposits. Um, and Tony has been working on this project uh, for Molly Corp 30 years ago, for Hecla Mining Companies 25 to 20 years ago. And, and again for us, um, a great asset to have him as part of the team. Dr. Roshan Bapu uh, did, has done a lot of the metallurgical test work for us and has devised the process that I mentioned before. Uh, he actually did the early, uh, some of the early metallurgical test work on Mountain Pass for Molly Corp and uh, helped devise their metallurgical uh, processing methods. So again, a, a gentleman with uh, quite a bit of experience. Uh, Dudley Kingsnorth, uh, near, towards the bottom of the list, uh, is probably one of the world's leading experts on the rare earth markets, a uh, mineral economist. Uh, uh, he actually w led uh, the, the evaluation team that did the feasibility study in the Mount Weld rare earth deposit in Australia before Linus Corporation had it. Jack Lifton, uh, has worked in the rare earth industry, more in the manufacturing side of things. Um, he's been a, involved with that for 45 or 50 years, and uh, we use him for a lot of strategy and OEM uh, contact information. Uh, to our capital structure, we have about 44 million shares outstanding, fully diluted 47.5 million, uh, have a number of options out, uh, warrants are pretty much all exercised. Uh, our market capitalization is somewhere around $500 million. Today we're a little under $12 a share, I think, at this point. Insider holding 5.8%. Uh, cash on hand, about Canadian $69 or $70 million and no debt. So we're very strong financially and uh, we have all the money we need in the bank for the next three years. The next financing that we'll need uh, will be for our mine construction where we anticipate that we would be raising maybe a hundred million dollars um, assuming the pre-feasibility and feasibility studies uh, work well. Well thank you very much for watching and listening to my description of the Bear Lodge Rare Earth Project. Um, if you want to learn more about the company please visit www.rarelementresources.com. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.